After two hours in the car, a scorched hard palate from a flat white in Pret, three train rides and a Kit Kat chunky on the underground, it felt good to shake hands with strangers in a field. Hi, I'm Jimmy and let me take you for a run around the Hackney Half Marathon. It's 9am on a Sunday morning and my Hoka Rocket X2 is sizzling on my feet like sparklers on bonfire night. I'm excited, my back feels like a mighty oak, my belly feels like asparagus being brought to the boil. It's a tight introduction as we Ikea our way past the crest towards the open ocean. I'm running with John Cosgrove and Joe Wade and our coordinated kit makes us look like a tragic but sexy boy band on the Hallmark Channel. First up at the judge's house, Joe narrowly avoids denting his kazoo in a high-speed elbow collision. John senses some electrical wires are burning and accelerates away up the bus lane. He's heard a key change and is the first one to kick back the stool and stand up for the power ballad chorus. The first eight kilometres passes effortlessly as I move through the crowd, overtaking men twice my height like a cheeky field mouse with a mouthful of berries. At mile six, I suddenly and unexpectedly get my first negative thought. I try and push it away but it returns. Self-doubt taunts me from the edges of a haunted forest in my mind. Someone crosses a road in front of me. I'm confused. Am I cursed now? Our route goes past the garden of earthly delights where someone shouts my name. This banishes the demon. My thumbs take the shape of fighter jets and my mind zooms to a happy place once more. I am light. I am quick. I'm tap dancing my way through Hackney. I'm topped up on good vibes once again. I see a man racing with his top off and for once it doesn't make me angry. He's probably heading back to his child for a big hug from the cookie monster. The atmosphere is very London, exactly how you'd sell it in a gift shop. Big drums, whooping and yelling, barbecues in Michael Caine ship paddling pools and traffic wardens blowing coronation confetti off yellow lines. My dad went to London and all I got was his shaky GoPro footage. I check my gears and I'm definitely not in neutral. My heart rate tells me I'm in love, so I wind down the windows and enjoy the ride. When I'm racing, I don't think about the training I've done or the shape I'm in. I think in Instead about the music I like or how a poet must feel when they wake in the middle of the night with an idea or how on some mornings I can see the rain several minutes before it reaches my garden. Racing down Sheep Lane, Goldsmiths Row and Regent's Canal towpath in my Jeremy Beadle spats, I catch my reflection in a shop window. That's not me, that's a jacket potato rolling down a hill. I laugh to myself and somehow move faster. I feel a human tension in me slip away as I flap in a breeze like a clean bed sheet blowing across the prairie. My the watch is unrecognisable from the one I jog with at home. The numbers don't make sense amongst the noise. The negative voice returns, but I realise I've been running for nearly an hour without seeing a single Greggs. This isn't the real world, this is a dream and we're all free. I go all Barbara Windsor at water stations. What the hell was in that is too early for gin, governor. I get laughs like I'm on the Graham Norton show. At mile 11, I get a high five from a kid. It sets off this whole process where I think about how far I've come on my running journey, both today and since I started jogging again in 2019. The finish line is in sight. My belly starts sloshing maracas around my guts. I move past the pack I'd shared all those miles with. I activate the turbos. I turn my hat backwards and I make eye contact with the Doberman. I'm throwing myself towards the shadows and I'm ready for the pain. Closing my eyes, I give thanks to the boy I used to be who would run up the mountain in his school shoes. I thank my PE teacher for leaving me at the track because I was the only one to get to the final. I thank the lightning that hit the caravan when I was 10. I I thank my first guitar for unlocking something deep inside me. I thank my aching feet for carrying me around Hackney today. And then it all stops. Jimmy! Yes! You're in the end, mate. You're thank in you. Come thank you. Oh, thank you. Shake my well hand. earned. Well thank earned, you. son. Thank yeah. you. I think, I think that was good. I don't know. Uh, yeah, struggle towards the end. I try and talk, but it's no good. I go back to the VIP area and I can't reach into the back pockets of my shorts to get the wristband out. My feet look like Cardiff Fish Market on a Friday. I asked George. Enjoy, yeah. if I had a marvellous time, good. except about mile eight, it felt like I was swallowed a whole rancid fruit bowl or something. Where I'd had too many gels and like pre race drugs, and they all sat in my stomach and just. <laughs> <laughs> That was my first race outside Wales in over a decade. I wonder if they'll ever let me leave again.